Shepard's death is one of the most polarizing plot events in the entirety of Mass Effect. And no, I'm not talking about their first death. Shepard's first death was shockingly awesome and drove the plot forward fantastically. I'm talking about their second death. Some players view Shepard's second death as the ultimate sacrifice for the galaxy, others view it as an inevitable part of war, and some even view it as necessary because Shepard was tired, as if vacations or shore leave don't exist. Nope. I'm tired. Guess I'll die. And of course, we can't discuss Shepard's death without touching on the loophole of Perfect Destroy, but I'll tackle that later on. Loophole aside, in the majority of the endings, Shepard does die. And in my eyes, Shepard's death, from a story perspective, was completely unnecessary and defeated the entire point of the trilogy. In stories, death is inevitable, and when used appropriately, provides meaning to the player or the characters closest to the person who died. Death can be used to make a point about who deserves to live, or used as a shock factor. But the main way to make a death truly meaningful is if the character's death is tied to the plot in such a way where their death is a fitting end to their character arc. And for even more bonus points, if they didn't die, then something important plot-wise couldn't have happened. Their death results in true change either in the world or for the characters around them. In popular media today, death has been used in very confusing ways, like the deaths of popular characters without rhyme or reason, which is why the viewers of those stories become rightfully outraged. With good storytelling, death has meaning and purpose. In bad storytelling, it doesn't. So because meaningful deaths are tied to a character's arc, it's important to examine Shepard's arc over the course of the trilogy to see why their death was unnecessary. And in Shepard's case, there's one crucial aspect that restricts how their character arc plays out. The fact that Shepard is a customizable protagonist whose character arc is shaped by the player with every action and dialogue choice they make across the trilogy. Every Shepard's character arc is different, which results in multiple character arcs. This alone makes it a very limiting factor in deciding if Shepard should have died at the end, and I'll get into what probably should have been Shepard's fate because of this in a little bit. For me though, the main reason Shepard's death defeated the point of the trilogy was because of a crucial broken promise first established in Mass Effect 1 and 2. Before I get to Shepard's character arc throughout the trilogy, let's first go over what I mean by promises in stories. In good stories, the writers establish certain promises to the player that are expected to be fulfilled at some point in the story. For example, at the start of Mass Effect 1, Shepard is told by Nihilus that they're a Spectre candidate. With this, the promise established to the player is that we'll eventually find out whether Shepard becomes a Spectre or not, which makes the eventual Spectre ceremony hit a good note because it fulfills that promise to us. The promises given by the writers to players can be divided into two categories plot promises, and character promises. A plot promise example is when we're assigned to track down Saren after becoming a Spectre, we expect a resolution of whether we successfully track him down or if he escapes. The final battle with Saren is extremely satisfying because the tension of that particular promise built over the course of the game before eventually reaching a conclusion during the Battle of the Citadel. Fulfilling plot promises are the bread and butter of a good game, but for me, it's the character promises that resonate the most on an emotional level. In my eyes, Shepard's unnecessary death was the result of one Shepard-specific promise in particular being broken, which I'll get into later. First, let's dive into the promises established over the course of the trilogy for Shepard. Even though every player created a unique character arc for Shepard throughout the trilogy, there were common arc threads shared across all playthroughs. And these common arc threads developed into promises for Shepard's arc, which we expected to be fulfilled later on in the story. Let's first look at the Shepard-specific promises established in Mass Effect 1. In Mass Effect 1, the first promise established is that Shepard's actions have consequences, which we see with the Vermeer choice of whether to save Caden or Ashley. The second promise established early on in the story is that Shepard is a chosen one type of protagonist. Chosen ones in stories are common for protagonists because it puts them in a unique position to resolve the conflict experienced in the story. By having Shepard take in the information of the Prothean Beacon, 
a feat that most other minds wouldn't have survived, Shepard gains Chosen One status in the very first mission. The information of the Prothean Beacon contained in Shepard's mind was a recurring plot point throughout the story as we chase Saren down, eventually leading to the climax on Ilos and the Citadel. But it's really the third promise that's the most Shepard-defining one of them all. In the last scene after we defeated Saren, Shepard's status is briefly unknown after one of Sovereign's broken parts hits the Citadel. You can see your squadmates shake their heads when asked if Shepard survived, resulting in a moment for the player not knowing if Shepard lived or died. However, Shepard eventually emerges from the rubble, victorious in the battle for the Citadel, creating a character-defining promise to the player that Shepard is not a martyr, but a true hero who can save the Citadel and survive to tell the tale. These three promises are the most defining Shepard-specific promises by the writing team to us players. And the absolute magnificence of these established promises is that all of them are fulfilled again and then some in the next installment with Shepard's continued arc in Mass Effect 2. The fulfillment of Mass Effect 1's promises in Mass Effect 2 is why I consider it to be the most satisfying game out of the trilogy. The first promise of damning consequences for our choices were taken to the next level with the suicide mission at the end of the game. Every member of your squad could die, including Shepard, if you didn't finish enough loyalty missions. Crazy consequences that hammered home the importance of our decisions. And as to the second promise, Shepard's Chosen One status is again cemented right at the start of the game, because they're literally brought back from the dead to save human colonists from the Collector threat. But once again, the most character-defining promise of them all is the third promise. The crucial promise established in the first game of Shepard being a survivor against long odds is firmly front and center at the end of Mass Effect 2 when Shepard and crew undergo the suicide mission. The writers calling it a suicide mission tells you everything you need to know. Crew members will most likely die, and even Shepard themselves might not make it. However, by having Shepard canonically survive a mission dubbed the Suicide Mission into Mass Effect 3, it firmly establishes the third promise again. Shepard being a death-defying hero is a core part of Shepard's character that was not only promised in Mass Effect 1's final mission, but once again promised at the conclusion of Mass Effect 2's final mission too. Shepard is a survivor. It's simply part of who they are. And this core character trait is put to the test again in Mass Effect 3. Before we get to Shepard's Mass Effect 3 arc, let's first take a look at two prominent deaths in the trilogy that struck different notes because of how their character arcs ended. Thane and Morden. Thane, when you first recruit him, admits that he's dying, which in and of itself is a morbid promise to the player that he's probably gonna die sooner than we think. In Mass Effect 3, when Thane dies at the hand of Kai Lang, while shocking, it isn't a huge emotional blow, because in the back of our minds, we knew Thane was probably going to die at some point. However, the main problem with his death in this way is that his sacrifice to save the Salarian Counselor isn't directly tied to his character arc. He just happened to be recovering on the Citadel when the attack happened, and so stepped in to help. Even though his death was honorable and a contrast to his assassin ways, it didn't necessarily feel fitting, and played more on shock factor more than anything else. The most tear-jerking moment is when he's with his son afterward, because then Thane connects his sacrifice with being a good example for Kolyat, which lands emotionally because his son is a major part of his character arc. So was Thane's death meaningful? He was going to die relatively soon, so his sacrificial death held meaning for him, and his son was also proud, which makes his death meaningful for a character extremely important to Thane. That's why I'd say that Thane's death was meaningful, but it wasn't quite the tearjerker like the next squadmate's death was. Morden's death results in the most emotional response for most players because his death is intimately connected to his character arc and a major plot point. In Mass Effect 2, Shepard learns that Morden was integral to the creation of the Genophage. Morden defends the Genophage's creation all throughout his loyalty mission, and you can even agree that he made the right decision with renegade dialogue choices. However, in Mass Effect 3, Morden has a change of heart. When Shepard first meets him, he's trying to undo the damage he himself created 
by working on a cure for the genophage. And of course, if you chose the Paragon dialogue options on Tuchanka, he eventually gets his wish fulfilled by single-handedly unleashing the genophage cure for all Krogan. It had to be him. Someone else might have gotten it wrong. Morden's death emotionally hurt more than Thane's because Morden's death wasn't promised when we first met him. His death was necessary to affect major change in the world, and his character arc was tied to the genophage cure, a major plot point built up since Mass Effect 1. Morden's death is the perfect example of a meaningful death. The curing of the genophage was a plot device that served the end of Morden's character arc. The plot served the character. Bonus points handed out too, because Morden's death affected change for the world and the characters around him. So with those character deaths in mind, what would have been a fitting end to Shepard's arc? Before I get to that, there's something I want to bring up that impacts our commander's journey, and thus the conclusion to their arc. In a podcast interview in 2023, Mac Walters, one of the lead writers of the trilogy, revealed that a trilogy was always planned from the very first Mass Effect game. Casey Hudson, the trilogy's game director and the one who originally came up with the idea of Mass Effect, applied the trilogy stamp from the start of Mass Effect's production. So with this knowledge, it adds new light to how Shepard's character arc should have ended. Since Shepard's story plays out over three games, it adds more added weight to the promises from the first two games. And the knowledge that it was meant to be a trilogy also brings another loaded question to the table. What was the point of the trilogy? On the plot level, the point of the trilogy was the removal of the Reaper threat. But after crafting Shepard into the protagonist I specifically wanted with every single choice I made, the point of the trilogy in my eyes was different than just the Reaper threat. On a meta level, I already knew the Reaper threat would be thwarted, because in most stories the good guys win. So I inherently knew the Reapers would be defeated, I just didn't know how exactly it would happen. So for me, the point of the trilogy wasn't the plot of the Reaper threat. I believe the point of the trilogy was Commander Shepard's journey, which I and many other players individually crafted over the course of three games. And the end of that journey began in Mass Effect 3. Mass Effect 3 fulfilled the first two Shepard promises with flying colors. Our choices and consequences were felt more than ever, with galaxy-altering decisions sprinkled throughout the game. And we were once again touted as the Chosen One by Hackett and Anderson, as they constantly reminded us that we were the only one capable of rallying the galaxy to fight the Reapers. However, the third promise of Shepard's survival against long odds being utterly broken with the endings of the game, to me, was completely unnecessary and defeated the point of the trilogy. The main reason the endings failed in my eyes was because the writers focused on the trilogy's plot promise over Shepard's survival promise. They decided that how the Reapers were defeated was what was most important. And so, which way that defeat happened would be the final decision we made. But again, on a meta level, we already knew the Reaper threat would be eliminated, so it didn't land as the final twist I assumed they were going for. Character arcs, more than plot arcs, are what resonate with players the most. When a character goes through something, we feel and learn from it, which is what stories are all about. So at the end, the final choice we made shouldn't have been how the Reaper's arc ended, but rather the character's arc that we had crafted over the course of the entire trilogy, Commander Shepard. Shepard's death being tied to the plot point of unleashing the Crucible wasn't meaningful because how the Reapers died didn't hold significant meaning for Shepard. The only thing Shepard cared about was that the galaxy would be saved, not how it was saved. And the fact that Shepard had to die for a choice that didn't feel significant to them or the characters they cared about, made it completely unnecessary. Based on the first two games, in a trilogy where promises are the foundation of what's to come, Shepard potentially dying should have been an individual decision that every player got to decide. But unfortunately, Shepard dies in all of the endings, except for maybe one loophole, which I'll discuss in a bit. The only character arcs that would have added meaning to Shepard's death are arcs that transformed Shepard from a renegade to a paragon. This would be similar to Tony Stark's journey of becoming a better man and sacrificing himself at the end of Endgame. 
Tony's death felt meaningful because him being the one to save the galaxy wasn't a decision he would have ever made at the start of his journey. But at the end, he was willing to do so, a true character change that held meaning for himself and those around him, and his death affected change on a very large scale. So was Shepard's death that was tied to saving the galaxy meaningful and necessary? Shepard, at the start of their journey, would have decided to die saving the galaxy. That's just who they were, and that's why they undertook missions like the suicide mission. So having them die at the end of their arc doesn't land in a meaningful way for themselves or for those around them, even though they were the only one who could save the galaxy. And because of this, using the Crucible to defeat the Reapers shouldn't have been tied to Shepard dying. However, the two were invariably linked. The writers made Shepard's death necessary to finish off the Reaper War, which players already knew on a meta level was inevitable. This, to me, is simply bad storytelling. The character isn't supposed to serve the plot. The plot is supposed to serve the character. That's why I view Shepard's death as unnecessary. As to why their death defeated the point of the trilogy, I'll go back to the fact that a proper end to Shepard's arc should have been the main point of the trilogy. The only way that Shepard's death would be viewed as a meaningful end to their character arc is for players that didn't play either of the previous Mass Effect games. They wouldn't have known that Shepard saved the galaxy twice already, or that the most crucial aspect of their character is being a survivor. They wouldn't enter the third and final game with expected promises. They'd simply know Shepard as the chosen one destined to stop the Reaper threat, because no one else can rally the galaxy. Which would make Shepard's sacrifice at the end of the game a fitting end, because it could be viewed as a necessary plot point to ending the war. And if viewed as a single game, Shepard's death at the end would fit the arguments of war results in death, Shepard was tired, and Shepard became a legend. However, Mass Effect 3 isn't just a standalone game. It was originally and purposefully designed to be the final installment in a planned trilogy. And based on that, Shepard's death broke the crucial promise of Shepard's story being one of survival against long odds that was established in Mass Effect 1 and 2. That's why I personally feel that Shepard's death defeated the entire point of the trilogy. Perfect Destroy giving us hope that Shepard survived is the one interesting loophole created during the extended cuts after the endings received enormous backlash. And I think a lot of fans latched onto the hope of Shepard's survival in that ending because it would fulfill the promise of Shepard being a survivor. However, the fact that Shepard's survival is locked behind an ending choice that we're told destroys synthetic life is pretty unfortunate. This is because Shepard living is then tied to a choice that could go against their player-crafted belief that synthetic life shouldn't be wiped out. And that's why I want Shepard to return in the next game. Not because I think Shepard is the only one who can carry the franchise, but simply because Shepard's survival is a broken promise that I believe deserves to be fulfilled. Shepard deserves a proper end to their character arc determined by us players, because we were given the choice as to how they lived. And maybe, just maybe, the current Mass Effect team might be trying to finally fulfill that promise. The teaser trailer from 2020 shows Liara picking up an N7 helmet piece that might symbolize Shepard's return. And I'm very certain that the planet that Liara and crew descend to is Alcara, the planet where Shepard first died at the start of Mass Effect 2. So will Shepard once again return in the next game? I think the answer to that is 100% yes. And I dive into why Shepard is probably going to return in this teaser trailer breakdown right over here. See you there.